Hey, guess who's here with us? It's Due Dissidents. Keaton Weiss and Russell Dobular are the hosts of Due Dissidents show on YouTube, Rumble, and Substack. And they're here for us now. Say hello, fellas. Hello. hello. All I guess right. the audience missed us. It's been a while. Who, or should I say who that? Oh, yeah, so, who that? Uh, so, who that? so uh, Keaton is fresh back from uh, New Hampshire where he was on the ground meeting the people. And uh, I did that in uh, in Des Moines. I went to the cover the anyway dobbler is over in uh, new orleans he's in Whoa. new orleans interviewing boosie the famous rapper i assume that's <laughs> and, and as you as you can tell from the background and lighting i've joined a hipster voodoo cult yeah i like it though i really do yeah. it looks nice yeah. uh Thank so keaton went to uh new hampshire and he went to a marion williamson rally I don't know if you would call this actually a rally. <laughs> what is it, like a meeting? It's like uh, a... Uh, Marianne Williamson meeting? luncheon. Yeah, it's more of a coffee clutch. And, yeah, coffee uh, clutch. Exactly. and he got to ask her a question, and Marianne Williamson turns on the charm. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, somewhere in the back. Hi there. Um, I'm sorry, I'm late. Yes. Oh, sorry. No. Um, first of all, I give you a lot of credit for staying in uh, this race. Um, I <laughs> Very nice. Suck up first. Here yeah. comes. That's a little, just get it, just kind of, yeah, it's a little, little range finder. Little range I had finder. gotten thrown out of a Dean Phillips rally uh, the day before, so I didn't want to get thrown out of this one because I wanted to get my question. In. Um. By the way, what's Dean? Oh, you, you got, you got thrown out of Nikki Haley's that day, right? That day, yeah. Is Dean Phillips' slogan, who? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think there was any oxygen inside the Democratic Party for a primary challenge. I still don't think there's much oxygen for a primary challenge, but I do give you credit for you're in here less than 48 hours to go before the vote. And look at all these people here. Um, at what point, though, do we say that the Democratic Party is the wrong Wrote. Um, you have these three great people here who are talking about feeding kids. Um, if we are not a majority of even the voting public or even the Democratic primary, you mentioned Dean Phillips. He's a walking pile of garbage. And he went from zero percent in the race a few months ago. Now he's pulling in the 30s. You're down in single digits. I, I don't mean any disrespect by that. I'm just saying it's not necessarily because of the race you ran. And I don't agree with you on everything for sure. It's because of the. Hey, no disrespect. All right. But uh, you're really doing shitty over here. No disrespect. I, I, I was very close with your uncle. You know, I, you know, I respect you. I'm just saying you're not really doing the right thing here. He always treated me fair. Yeah, it was always Pretty fair to me, but you're I, running. I, you're not Look bringing around. in the cash. You got morons on the street here saying we're going to write in Joe Biden. Joe Biden's not even running in this race. He's got people writing his name in 60, 70 percent. So if we can harness That's this right. energy that you're talking about, and I have a lot of respect for that vision, if we can harness this into That's mutual right. aid networks with the understanding that we are not a voting majority, but we can harness this power in other ways to help each other survive the inevitable demise of this country, which we all know is coming. Do we not? I mean, we feel it, right? <laughs> Right? It's going to be Biden. It's going to be Trump. It's probably going to end up being Trump. So there you have it. Right. So what do we do at that point? Well, I am 100% not involved in your analysis. All right. Fair enough. So, so what did she say? I am 100% not what? I am 100% not enrolled in your analysis. <laughs> oh, what does that Meaning mean? Meaning she thinks she's going to win. She's basically, I mean, you'll see if the video plays, she gives the polls are rigged, polls are fake. Basically, well, I'm not polling in single digits. First of all, I'm still I'm actually going to shock the world and win the primary. I'm I'm in shock by your violent attack on both Marianne and democracy itself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but here, let's let's I'm let not enrolled in your attack, sir. Please, I, I don't appreciate you mansplaining <laughs> to her like that. And uh, let's go. Here we go. Here's her answer. So, first of all. Uh, oh, okay. they all they they all agree that she, she's going to be the president. Okay. percent of Americans, excuse me, 70 percent of Democrats have been saying for months that they wanted to hear from other voices than Joe Biden. So you can't say that there was no hunger for something else. As far as how uh, they're writing him in, though, I'm sorry, I'll let you finish, but they're, they're going to write him in. He's going to win as a writer. Okay. 
Hampshire. No, I'm not coming from New Hampshire, okay. but I'm reading the data. Okay, where do you come from? I'm from uh, New York. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a New Yorker talking to New Hampshire. <laughs> All right, well, the numbers don't lie. I'm not, I don't mean any disrespect, Marianne. I really don't. Go ahead, go ahead. No, but a grand state is going out this morning because he was disruptive. Go ahead. He was disruptive. I'm not being disruptive. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so go ahead. in New Hampshire, what that guy's referencing is the fact that I had been thrown out of a Nikki Haley rally earlier that day. In New Hampshire, there are a lot of people who come to New Hampshire every four years, just like if you're a horse racing fan, you go to the Kentucky Derby, you go to the Preakness, right? There are these like politics junkies who just go from event to event to event. So apparently that guy must have been at the Nikki Haley rally this morning that oh. I was throwing out. Okay, so they okay, so now so so now they've got you pegged as being disruptive. And, that, and right. that's when you whisper to him, snitches get stitches, right? <laughs> 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 and you and and she's and she's also sniffed out that you're not from New Hampshire, which turns out to be a big sin. Let's listen. A New Yorker coming to New England and telling them how they feel. I mean that's really audacious, but hold on just a moment. <laughs> Uh, there is Marianne Williamson using the typical New Yorker blow off in the same hack move as road comedians do. That's what that. Oh, you're from New York. Anyway, is that what they as do? If she's more New Hampshire than New York, right? Like she's a New York, L.A. Texas. celebrity. She's acting like she's from she's she, she's from New Hampshire. Like she was raised on lobster and fucking corn cob. She's the master of <laughs> subtle divisionism. <laughs> Yeah. That's what that is with her. She's got that hypnotic tone. It slips right by. Some people don't even notice. She's like a Trojan horse, except there's nobody inside. Let's listen to the rest. <laughs> Here we go. Hold on. The One of the things I've learned about Granite Staters is that they keep things very close to their chest. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I learned about Granite Staters is how many people in the last few days haven't decided who they're voting for. But I have a good feeling they're not going to necessarily explain it to you. Okay, so we don't know. As far as the single digits, I have been, you said Dean and Dean Phillips and, and uh, doing higher. I was in a double digits in the national polls. And this is not just about the DNC, it's about the DNC, but it's also at least as much about money. So, the, first of all, she just tries to dismiss your analysis, and she say, she's basically saying, oh, the people in New Hampshire are lying to you when you talk to them, and they're lying to the pollsters because they're hold, holding their opinions close to their chest. The, the phrase is close to the vest, but I'll give it to her. <laughs> and um, so what, what did you make of her response, Keaton? You were there. What did you make of it? Yeah, well, there's about she goes on for five more minutes. We're actually playing all of my New Hampshire footage on a live stream tonight at nine o'clock. Um, so there's more there. But I wanted to give a sort of Twitter type video there for that, because that was the crux of her rebuke to my prediction that she's going to lose. She's going to come in a distant third. Um, she's polling in the single digits. And she's basically giving the defense that a lot of these liberals like to bash trump for whenever he gets an unfavorable poll he says it's a fake poll it's fake news fake poll the polls are rigged that's what she's saying there she's saying that no actually the dozens of polls that have me in single digits are wrong because new hampshire voters uh hold things close to the to vest or, or chesta as, as as she said um so yeah she's just giving uh, well, a, a transparently nonsensical answer now in fairness i will say that like She's running for office. It's two days before the vote. I didn't expect her to say, yeah, you know what? You're right. On second thought, this has all been a giant waste of time. Everybody go home and don't <laughs> vote for me on Tuesday. Like, I didn't expect for her to say that. I, I predicted that she would spin it somehow. Um, but the fake polls defense was so weak that um, I got the sense that the room was very receptive to what I said. There were uh, well over 100 people in that room. She had actually a pretty big crowd for the size of the venue that it was. And you noticed some applause, but not much when she gave me that, you know, New York thing. The business. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I sensed I had the room on my side uh, for the most part because I saw a lot of people nodding along and <clears throat> really seemed to appreciate what I was saying. And um, look, the the proof is going to hit them tomorrow. Um, we're going to find out in less than 48 hours who was telling the truth in that room and who was selling people a line of shit in that room. Um, this has been our main critique of the Marianne campaign from day one um, is that uh, 
it's just it is a waste of time and more importantly, a waste of resources of working people to get involved in these dead end Democratic primary campaigns. In a sense, this was really a bookend to our friend Nick Cruz when he interviewed her way on early on in the campaign. He said working people spent a hundred million dollars trying to get Bernie Sanders the Democratic nomination. And what do we get for it? Nothing. Nothing. Not only did he lose a nomination, he sold out whatever movement he had. And so we cannot afford to do this a third time. We're not going to do it a third time. This was uh, what we had to say about the Marianne campaign from day one. And so I thought with two days to go before the vote, this would be a nice way to bookend this. Okay, you know, you did that interview with RBN a year ago where they told you this was their concern. You blew them off. Here we are a year later. Where are you? You're at you're at five, six, seven percent if you're lucky, which is where she's going to finish. She's not going to shock the world just like Ramaswamy was not going to shock the world. We said Vivek was going to lose big in Iowa and probably drop out. And a lot of his supporters came at us. The polls are fake. But what happened? Same thing's going to happen tomorrow with the Marianne campaign. Maybe you should read her book, mm -hmm. A Course in Miracles. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe hey, she Mar should read her. Books. Hey, Mar Marianne, I've got one more miracle to add to your list. Do you make it get past the primaries? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, 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 I thought I thought primaries were mythical stuff. What is she doing? Uh, well, here's what uh uh, Nick says from RBN, he says she does realize she's running for president, right? Her pointing out uh, you from New York to deflect was such a scumbag move. Marion had no answer to your devastating criticism of her strategy. That's and by the way, if um, if not being from New Hampshire means you shouldn't weigh in on the New Hampshire primary, <laughs> why the hell does the New Hampshire primary count so much for the entire nation? Right. Um, right. So yeah, last I heard, she's not running for president of New Hampshire. That's right. Oh, <laughs> but also like the main reason I made that point. I mean, that was the that was the point I, I wanted to make going in. But it just happened to be that she started out that event by highlighting some mutual aid activists. Apparently, the owner of that restaurant uh, cooked meals uh, for kids during the covid lockdowns uh, and gave them out for free. So and she talked about that. So I'm like. OK, so rather than invest our hopes in pretending that you're going to have some progressive breakthrough inside this just transparently corrupt party, why not harness this energy? Why not use whatever power is in this room to help each other as the country goes to hell? Because the country is going to hell and it's going to hell mostly because the voters want it to. Um, you know, she <laughs> says, well, 70 percent of Democrats wanted somebody else to run. Well, 90 percent of Democrats say they want Medicare for all, but only 30 percent vote for it. The Democrats do what they're told. What Democratic voters say they want is fucking irrelevant. Um, and so, you know, this is a, a lesson that uh, we've been trying to impart to people as best we can over the course of our show, pretty much. And um, it's it's a lesson that these Democratic voters uh, just refuse to learn. And uh, she gets into some of that stuff later on in that answer. But her final rebuke was that, well, we can't give up. You're telling me to give up. And I'm not telling you to give up. I'm telling you to give up on the Democratic Party. That's the difference. But these lifelong PMC Democrat types just can't make that break. They see surrendering the Democratic Party as a total surrender of activism, which it's not. Actually, the most nihilistic thing you can do is continue to uh, run inside and therefore legitimize this just absolutely just rotten to the core organization that doesn't even deserve to call itself a political party. It's really not a legitimate party. It's, I mean, Joe Biden, I mean, they're currently, did you, she knows that, see, that's the whole thing. It's a game, right? But the people in that room, I, I wish more of them realized that it was the game that it is because Marion Williamson. Well, exactly. Marion Williamson knows it's a game. She knows she's never going to get the nominee. She knows that they'll never let her. They wouldn't let Bernie Sanders, who was wildly more popular than she was, uh, get the nomination. They're going to cheat, steal, and right out in public, they're doing it, right? They're rigging the primary as we're talking. Uh, Joe Biden won't debate anybody. They won't. Uh, they're not doing any. Uh, so... <laughs> What you want to oh, say? That's exactly uh, right. And oh. I thought the people in that room were reachable, which is why 
I ate a little shit. I didn't want to have it get hostile and get thrown out because I sensed that they were on my side. And when the crowd's on your side, you don't want to squander it by, you know, having the whole thing go to hell. So I let her give her answer. I trusted that people would see through it. If they didn't see through that answer, they're going to see through it in just over 24 hours when she comes in at five, six percent. <laughs> Um, can I, I, uh, Mary, I, I'm not saying you should quit. I'm just saying uh, a, a pie has a better chance in a fight with Chris Christie than you <laughs> <laughs> getting anywhere in this race. Uh, so your your point is that it's time to give up on the Democratic Party, which was the point of this show in 2016, and um, and that Marion Williamson and those people need to come to face facts. Donald Trump's going to be president. Most likely. And so what do you do from there? And they don't first. She doesn't have a plan to do anything from there. Uh, she doesn't. And she's never going to give up on the Democratic Party because so after she loses, she could take her place in the pantheon of progressives who ran for fun and book deals. <laughs> that's that's what this is actually is. And her own staff said she was running for a book deal. And, you know, when she came on the show, she was just as uninformed as she was the first time she ran. And uh, she's not really that interested in things, but she she has a lot of good slogans like we don't have a health care system. We have a sick care system. Yes, yeah, she says shit like that. <laughs> you should make a calendar of her saying. Yeah, but I mean, it was like a 2016 rally talking about the legacy of FDR and how the Democrats have abandoned their roots and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, we know, we've known just, this you know, for a decade. We've known this. Exactly. Exactly. We've known this. <laughs> she's and, like, and, you know, she, the reasons why your following is as loyal as they are is because you were really first on this. You you beat me to it. I mean, I didn't vote for biden in 2020 um but you know i i held out hope for the democrats longer than i should have uh and that is something that i look back on with regret but uh at this point i mean if you're still giving a stump speech talking about how the democrats need to return to fdr that's like telling mcdonald's they should give up the pink slime and go back to real meat like <laughs> mcdonald's got rich off the pink slime they're not going to go back to making real hamburgers, they switched to pink slime for a reason because it was profitable, made them money. Democrats are the same way. They're not turning back. There's a reason they switched business models in the first place. She's like an antidepressant for the disaffected Democrats. I mean, you know what I mean? Not Or the ones who are still going to vote Democrat, put it that way. Are you walking around in a state of dull fog and confusion? Ask your doctor if Marion X is right for you. <laughs> hey, you guys say Dem exit. But Joe Biden says Dementor. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, well, so it, it, sa it says a lot. I've noticed this lately with libs. And whenever I see them all with the same talking points at the same time, it tells me it must have appeared in an op-ed in the Boston Globe that everybody copied afterwards. Um, they all keep referencing FDR. Um, all right. Well, what does that say about your shit party that you have to go that far back to find some <laughs> right. justification for the existence of the Democrats? Right. You have to go back to FDR, not Kennedy, not Carter. What about Clinton? You have to go back to FDR to say something good about the Democrats. What, right. what, do you, what do you mean? Go back to Jimmy Carter and deregulating the trucking industry. Wasn't that fantastic? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, that's why they can't invoke him. Right. I mean, that, I, I mean, they don't invoke him because he's been so maligned. For other reasons. But, uh, th yeah, you have to go back to FDR to find a Democratic president. And, and really, no, I was I was arguing with a lib at that theater party that I was at. And that's what he did. He went back to FDR. I said, are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me? FDR, are you talking about it? What about Bill Clinton? What about <laughs> Bill Clinton, who handed the country's manufacturing uh, off to to overseas? That is how you got Donald Trump. That was that was the beginning of the end. Well, well, Reagan, well he, 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 yes, and Clinton did things Reagan couldn't have done in his wildest dreams. That's he right. followed Reagan's lead. He could well, he couldn't do things that George Bush the first couldn't do, which was NAFTA. Uh, Bill Clinton got that done. He then deregulated the media, took us from fifty giant media companies down to six. Right. He he then yep. uh, gutted welfare at the same time he exploded the prison population. And then he deregulated Wall Street, which crashed the economy within 10 years. And uh, who did it hurt the most? Black and brown people, poor people. And um, he wanted to privatize Social Security, but Monica Lewinsky's blowjob saved us from that. That's a fact. Yes. Right. So, yes. Uh, I mean, he was Ronald Reagan. And so was, I mean, 
on steroids. And and, and guess who else uh, said he was Ronald Reagan? Barack Obama. He said if, yep. he said if this was the 1980s, my policies would be considered center right policies because he was Ronald Reagan again. And he was a guy who looked good, who was screwing the workers and screwing up everybody. And by the way, exploding, uh, drilling and expo- uh, anyway, the whole thing. Um, and his health care plan was nothing but a giveaway to the health insurance companies and big pharma. And Barack Obama then repealed uh, habeas corpus and he made it OK for the CIA and the FBI to do propaganda on Americans, which we're going to talk about in a segment coming up in just a second, because they've been doing it nonstop, nonstop. What do you think? There's been so many things that have been uh, our own government doing propaganda on us since they, why do you think they repealed that law for kicks? Cause they weren't going to do it. No, to give baseball to Cuba. It was, <laughs> they were broadcasting <laughs> propaganda and Cuba loves baseball. And we're like, can't it's he- technically illegal. Can we make it legal? So Cuba can hear baseball. <laughs> And that's why they did it. And you guys are making conspiracies about it. It is just amazing as we start to go into the election cycle in earnest to watch Democrats start to close ranks around this mummy. I, they they went after Maureen Dowd. Oh yeah. Is anyone is anyone more of a sh- a committed Pelosi style shit lib than Maureen Dowd? And she pointed out the obvious. We've got a we're looking at a race between two octogenarian narcissists. How can you compare Joe Biden to Donald Trump? I I know that because I, I, you can't because Biden's been a lot worse for this country. Uh, I <laughs> that's the, neither of them have been great. Don't get me wrong. It's also it's on there's his no age. winners. There's no winners in a Donald in a Donald Trump uh, presidency or a Joe Biden presidency except military industrial complex, big oil, big pharma, uh, Wall Street. And the like. Well, that's why it's good to have a mummy as the president, I, I would think. But uh, it's they always go, oh, but he's too old. And I, that, like, being polite to not say obviously demented, somehow, every time it gets brought up, they're like, yeah, but lots of people are old. Yeah. Who, 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 I don't care if you're old. His brain, my grandfather's brain worked till he died in 96. You didn't sound, and by the way, when Biden's brain did work. It wasn't that great. It wasn't that great either. Even then. Yeah, no, it was not a great He brain was a plagiarist. Either. His nickname was Uncle yeah. Uncle Joe. Okay. That's that's a nickname of a guy that's brain doesn't work great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, do you, now, do you oh, let me that's old Uncle Joe for you. Real quick, do you think um if, if 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 Trump gets elected again, do you think it was a fluke that he didn't start a war in his first term? Ah. Uh and that he definitely will get on board with the military industrial complex in his second term? Or what do you or do you think that he's actually is a non non interventionist? I, I I'm I'm not sure about that. What do you think? I, you know, uh, Bob Woodward wrote a book about the administration. And look, Bob Woodward's a lib, but he's also an old school journalist. So I actually trust that his reporting is accurate. He, he's one of the last of the Mohicans. He believes that you have to report facts, right? He may be a lib, but he still adheres to that standard. And uh, ep- that is an episode that was in his book. I, I can't remember what the name of it was. Um, it was about like the first couple of years of the Trump administration. He described something that I thought was very revealing about Trump for the first time having to call military families who had lost their children. And he describes him being really disturbed by having to do that. Um, and that makes a lot of sense to me. The kind of evil that you will have inured yourself to if you came up through politics is a level of evil that being a New York real estate tycoon scumbag just does not prepare you for. He was not prepared for that side of the job of being this mass murderer in chief. You know, fucking a contractor is one thing, killing people's kids and then calling them to say sorry about that. That's a whole other thing. I think that is honestly a big part of why Donald Trump did not start any wars. I, I think he doesn't really want to be put in that position. I think it disturbs him in a way that somebody who started out in politics wouldn't be. So he doesn't have the stomach for it. Yeah. I I, I mean, based on that story, it sounds that way. Hey, guess what? Let me guess. Your medicine cabinet is filled with stuff that doesn't work. <laughs> you aren't sleeping. You still hurt and you're stressed out. Well, that's how it was for me. That actually is how it was for me. Especially since I quit weed. I couldn't sleep. But guess what? CBD distillery. 
I started using the CBD oil. It is a real change. I actually have been sleeping a little more. And Misha, you also say that uh, helps you sleep. And it helps you be calmer. The the CBD distillery's targeted formulations are made from high-quality, clean ingredients. No fluff, no fillers. Just pure, effective CBD solutions designed to help support your health. Because in two non-clinical surveys, 81% of customers experience more calm, just like Misha. 80% said CBD (laughs) helped with pain after physical activity. And I don't do physical activity, so I can't say, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? I mean, I go up the stairs. 80 percent and 90% said they slept better with CBD. If you struggle with the health concern and if you haven't found relief, make the change like I did to CBD distillery. That's and guys, to over 2 million customers and a solid 100 percent. How much? 100 percent money back guarantee. CB distillery is the source to trust. I have I got you a 20 percent discount. That's just to get you started. Visit cbdistillery.com and use code Jimmy for 20% off. That's cbdistillery.com and the code is Jimmy. cbdistillery.com. Hey, come see us do a live stand-up show. We're going to be in Palmdale, California, Omaha, Nebraska, Des Moines, Milwaukee, Lansing, Michigan, Bend, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, Philadelphia, Boston, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for those tickets. And we're adding a second show in London. (laughs) 